This is Finished Work TV, a place of inspiration, wisdom, and revelation. As you listen and receive God's Word today, your life will never remain the same. You can't talk to them for five minutes without hearing the enemy. You may not hear of Christ, but you will hear of the enemy. There are many Christians you won't hear about Jesus, you won't hear about Christ, you will hear the enemy, the enemy, the enemy, the enemy. They have been trained to become enemy-minded and not Christ-minded. And if you're enemy-minded, then you will always be in a continuous battle with the enemy. But if you're Christ-minded, you will continuously enforce your authority and your dominion when issue shows up. Why? Because you're a new creation, you have the God life. But you can be enemy-minded. By wrong teaching, you become enemy minded. Oh, the enemy has blocked this door. Oh, the enemy has done this. Oh, the enemy has done that. You can't be enemy minded and reign in life. You have to be Christ minded to, learn, to reign in life. You can't be enemy minded. There are many believers that everything is demon. Everything is Satan. Oh, Satan. The way, even in prayer, there are people who pray more to the devil than they talk about Jesus in prayer. Prayer was supposed to be your communion with the Father. But a lot of people, when it comes to prayer, it's about the devil. The devil. The prayer starts with the devil and ends with the devil. That's a wrong training. He said, I have come that you will have life and have it more abundantly. And if you don't have the expression of the abundant life, that means you're enslaved by deception. You're enslaved by ignorance. You become more. And let me say this to you. I've observed this. People who are demon-minded will continue to have demonic experience. I said, people who are demon-minded will continue to have demonic experience. Have you heard some Christians and you hear the ugly things that happens in their life? How this thing just happened? This just happened. Everything about them ended. This, you know, their, their stories are horrible. You know why it's horrible? You, he said, as a man thinking his heart, so, he's, he, so, so he is. If you expect the enemy, you have the enemy. If you become demon-minded, you're supposed to be authority-minded. You're supposed to be Christ-minded. You're supposed to be dominion-minded. You're supposed to be will of God-minded. You're supposed to be righteousness-minded. But if you're demon-minded, you know sometimes, I, I see this most times that, uh, oh, sorry to say this, that people don't know, most people don't know this book. So they go to a meeting. This guy is not born again. And he come to the meeting. And they, they pick him up. He's not born again. No. The guy is not born again. And they say, oh, look at what is happening to you, and this and that and that. That is not the first thing. The first thing is for the guy to know Christ. That situation will be there. He doesn't know Christ. And now, believers now exhort that, that look at what happened to that man. That man doesn't have the foundation of Jesus. And even if he has the foundation of Jesus, does he have the knowledge of how the word of God works and the kingdom of God works? You see, the problem here is that we magnify experience that is not consistent with our new nature in Christ Jesus and everybody just thinks that it's like that. It's not like that. I've been a Christian now for over getting close to 30 years. I've been a Christian now, getting close to 30 years. I've learned one thing in my work with God, that people get what they believe. People get what they believe. Whatever you believe, that, ah, there is a woman somewhere trying my destiny. That, you see, people believe in things like that. Instead of walking in their liberty, instead of walking in the authority. And let me say this, because of the nature which Africa is, the way Africa is, because most Africans came out from it, traditional worship and things like that so once you tell them about the devil how powerful the devil are they want to hear because most people are used to those kind of demonic manifestation and things like that so when you look at somebody telling them if any man being christ a new creation it's like what are you talking about if any man being christ a new creation they they easily believe that you are under an attack they easily believe that something is after you there is enemy after you once you say that you get the attention but that is not the gospel the gospel is that I came that you have life and have it more abundantly. And the knowledge of that life is what makes you superior on this earth realm. You need to know who you are to enjoy what you have. I said you need to know who you are in Christ to enjoy what you have in Christ. I said you need to know who you are in Christ to enjoy what you have in Christ. 
If I don't know the word of God, I would have believed so many things. Oh, trust me. I could have believed so many things. If I don't know the word of God, I could have said, oh, maybe there is something affecting my vision. Oh, there is something affecting my life. If I don't, because I knew the word of God, I knew the limit of the enemy. Knowing the truth empowers you to abolish experience that is not persistent with God's ways of doing, th- doing things. I need to know the truth to walk in power, to walk in dominion, to walk in strength. There are things people come and tell me, right? And I say, oh, I saw you in a dream. I saw this. I don't believe that. I believe the word of God. If anything you're telling me that is not persistent with the finished work of Jesus, I don't believe that. You may say, ah, this guy doesn't want to listen. I don't want to listen. I only want to listen to what Jesus did for me. I only want to listen to what I have in Christ. I only want to listen to what is consistent with the nature of God in me. I don't want to listen to anything that is not consistent with the finished work of Jesus and the person of Jesus. I don't want to listen to that because that is not the gospel. I don't want to use experience to determine my faith. I want to use the will of God to determine my faith, which is the person of Jesus and his finished work. There are things I won't believe. Feel like this is why I have issues inviting people most of the times. There are people I can't invite, not because I don't want to invite people, but because the truth is that there are certain people that come to teach some things based on the experience. We don't teach our experience; we teach the person of Jesus and his finished work. That is what we should be teaching. That is what people should be believing. Because if you don't believe in what he has done, that simply means you are starting a path that is not his path. And there are so many believers that have come to believe lies. They have come to believe lies. You know, I was listening to something this morning, you know, and the person said something, I respect the person very well, and the Holy Ghost said, that is not what happened for consigning that. That is not what happened consigning that. Satan never defeated Jesus. Do you get what I'm saying right now? Satan, you know, when we teach, so many things come out at the same time. And if we are not careful, we can just push it up that way. You get what I'm saying right now? Satan never, there was no instance where Satan defeated Jesus. There was no place where Satan defeated Jesus. All through the earthwork of Jesus, he walked in dominion. All through the earthwork of Jesus, he walked in dominion. And Jesus is the example. Jesus is the firstborn of many brethren. You get what I'm saying right now? So if you're not careful, you may think Satan whipped Jesus. Maybe he whipped him in this area. He never whipped him. Jesus whipped him all through. Jesus whipped him all through. He whipped him all through. He continued to have victory in his earthwork. He continued to have victory. He continued to have dominion. It was Jesus that submitted himself to death. It was Jesus. It's not the enemy that defeated him. He, he, he gave himself to it. He can decide not to. But he decided to give himself. And that was why he's our ransom. He died for us. He took our place. When somebody has made up his mind to do something, it's different from when he was forced to do it. Jesus was not forced to die for us. Jesus gave himself for us. He was not forced to die for us. He gave himself. When somebody gives himself, it's not that because he was defeated. He decided to just give himself, okay, I'm here for the sacrifice. I'm here. I've made myself available. I've made myself available. He made himself available as you will not be available for sin, for death, for oppression, for poverty, for scarcity, and for lack. He made himself available for you to have his life. He gave you his life. Do you know what is working in you? It's called the God life. Cancer can't survive it. Maluka Pratesha Baba. HIV can't survive it. Uh, see, let me tell you this. If you have the revelation of the life of God in your recreated human spirit, it will change your operational system. First, it will change how you think. Then he will change what you believe. Then he will decide what you should expect. So you look at your body, that this body is the temple of God. I will fulfill my days. You know, these days, all kinds of health talk is coming. They say, don't eat this, don't eat this, don't eat this, don't eat that. I'm asking them, what are we going to eat? Don't eat this, don't eat that, don't eat this, don't. My father, I've not been to any health lesson before, any health class before. Over, nine, over nine, close to 90 now, or if not 90 right now. And the man is the one cooking. He's the one cooking. He used to cook. Cook for my mom. He's the one cooking. The man, but 19, now cooking, doing his runs, 
So, you know, there was no head classes. All the things they taught on heads, he has ate them. Nothing happened. You see, let me say this to you. There are knowledge you have. That's the problem starts. You never knew that this thing can kill you. You are eating it and you're free. But the day you need to kill you, if you have come for death. Oh, you don't know. Oh, you don't know. Oh, oh. Every day come, you just carry this flower, I pull your mouth. They chop, they go. And nothing happened to you. Hey! A B, what did you eat? This flower. Ha! A B, oh, A B. Hey! A B, you want, A B, what do you want to do? You want to leave us like that? That is when the knowledge is introduced. Faith come by what? Fear come by what? That's good. So everything operates in this realm called hearing. Somebody has been eating something for years, but happy eating it, nothing happened. Once that knowledge just come, if you ask that. That is why you need to pay attention to what you listen to. Because all your trouble begins with what you're hearing. And all your victory begins with what you're hearing. I want to say that again. All your trouble begins with what you're hearing and all your victory begins with what you're hearing. That is why it's important that you need to filter what you hear even when people teach. You need to filter what you hear even when people teach. Why? Because if you don't filter it, you will believe what is not in line with the will of God and that will be the beginning of your heart. All the pains you have begins with what we hear what we listen to somebody said oh this is what killed his father this is what he killed his grandfather he killed his father now he has killed him i told you people that foundation is there what foundation the question is in that lineage who know about christ and his finished work you see there are questions to ask do you know you can have a phone that you don't maximize Huh? You can have a phone, but you don't know. Some people here they have big phone. Only hello, where did they come? Are they come? Oh, ha ha! The phone, the phone, they bought it for one point three million. All they do, where are you there? Are they go aba? Who tell you come? I go come for evening. Not for evening. Enough for the phone. Put it. it was too. She was too. The bottle is very expensive. She should not put it and put it in her back. Watch whether they are watching her. But that is not what the phone only was made for. She have never sent email with that phone. She have never used that phone to create a video. She have never used that. There are so many things. That is what happened when we came to Christ. There is more to us than what we heard. And that is why it's important for you to do the study of the word. You don't have a foundation problem. You need a revelation. I want to say that again. I said you don't have a foundation problem. You need what? You need a revelation. And if you don't have the revelation of who you are in Christ and what you have in Christ, I can tell you this for free, that you bow to things that you shouldn't bow to. Who you are in Christ. What you have in Christ. If you don't know about this, you're going to live your life in defeat all the time. You know why? The knowledge of what you have that is not in line with who you are in Christ will continue to prevail because the negative experiences will always agree with it. Christ in you, the hope of glory. The greater one lives in your inside. You're a new creation. If you're born again, you are a new creation. Jesus was not whipped. Jesus gave himself freely. He gave himself willingly. Remember when they came to him and just encountering him, they all fell. Do you know that Jesus can, you remember when they want to like, something want to happen and they just walk in their midst, they never knew. He left. So many things he was doing. So when it comes to them holding him to how? A man who turned water into wine. Somebody who brought Lazarus from the dead, comfort. <laughs> he, he gave himself. He can decide to look at all the Romans who are stand still for the next six months. If Elijah can say, if I be a man of God, if I, if I. <laughs> Let's look at Elijah now. If I be, if I be. What are the doubts and calling? I don't know. If I be a man of God, let fire fire consumed the guy just turned it was easy for Elijah to do that thing. but it was not easy for Jesus to do it because his mission was to die it was different from Elijah 
They came again, Elijah. Elijah doesn't have to pray. No prayer beating, no prayer bound. Maya kata prakata. He would, very simple phrase. If I be a man of God, heaven say you are confirmed. What was seen for in that matter was confirmation. Now, it was not like Elijah was like praying. He, said, he was asking a question. If I be a man of God, left her. You are a man of God. God was confirming the man of God. People were dying. It was confirming. That was what Elijah said. Now, if I be a man of God. He is a man. Heaven said. That was what Satan said to Jesus. If you know you are the son of God. Turn the stone. These are the operations. If you know. So anytime you ask that kind of question. You are trying to get an attention. So he said. If I be a man of God. Let fire come down. The fire was coming down. They have to come and beg Elijah. Say see I beg. No, no, no. We don't want, we don't want that. You see. No. No, no, no call. Because the testimony of nearly three, one man, oh, they called down a nation to ransom. Now I talk about Jesus. So Jesus gave himself. Not that, ah, they, uh, they carried him, they did this to him. He allowed those things to happen. Because you are in his mind. He needed to legally solve your problem, spiritually solve your problem, that what Adam has caused, I will take care of it completely, as you now can boldly declare your stand. So when the enemy reminds you your sin, you remind him what I did. When he reminds you your shortcoming, you remind him my finished work. When he reminds you your inabilities, your, in, your struggle, you remind him what I've done. See, I want you to function from what I have done and that is the foundation for strong faith. Who will whip Jesus? Nobody. Some of them don't want to wine. Some of them walk on sea. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Have you read the Gospels? Eh? Some of them walk up on sea ladies. Ah, oh boy. Praise God. How many of you have the testimony of Philip? The, this, this is Philip. Oh. He preached in the place. I'm a very nice. He appeared in another place. Ministry. Those oppressions. Jesus could do all of this. All of those things. He could do all of those things. Could do all of those things. Could do all of those things. You know what it means for somebody to die for four days? Go to UPTH and ask all the doctors. That if somebody died for two days, what will you do? Call all the doctors, all the great consultants. For all those problems the body will have, one person is also can answer the question. Jesus can heal the eye, can do the leg, <laughs> can do the. <laughs> but, but when you go in the natural, you have the people are studying how ear function for four years, for six years, for seven years. People are studying how eye function for six years. People are studying how the heart works for years. They are studying. They are having classes. Professor is coming. Somebody is explaining. They are bringing this out. They are watching. The same thing they have to study for years. If he has problem and somebody says, in the name of Jesus, let your heart be restored. Bam! Something happens. I say, wow. But can I say this to you? That same spirit that raised him from the dead is what he left inside of you. That same spirit that raised him from the dead is what he left inside of you to give you revelation of redemption, to give you interpretation of redemption, and to give you insight into the realities of redemption. He left the spirit in you for you to have this manifestation that is consistent with your new nature in Christ Jesus. That is why he left that spirit in you. He left the spirit in you. If, 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 if that same spirit that risen from the dead dwells in you, he will quicken your mortal body. You can't live in fear. You have the God life. Your new foundation is Jesus and his blood. I said, your new foundation is Jesus and his blood. If somebody tell you, oh, your family have a foundation problem. No, I don't have a foundation problem. People may have, I don't care. But I, my new foundation is Jesus and his blood. Jesus and his blood. This is the knowledge that changed my life. This is the knowledge that changed my life. People were struggling where I came from. Everybody was struggling. Nobody could do anything. Nobody could succeed with life. Everybody was struggling. And they were hearing there is something in the family. There is something in the family. When I got born again, I began to look into this world. I began to look into this world. And I found that, that I have a new foundation. 
Jesus and his blood. The lamb was slain. That laid the foundation of my faith. It is important to decide what you believe. Because if you don't believe right, you'll be hot, even in this kingdom. I said, if you don't believe right, you'll be hot, even in this kingdom. In this kingdom of God, you can be oppressed when you lack the light of who you are in Christ Jesus. In this same kingdom of God, you can be struggling and suffering and thinking, Lord, what is happening? Lord, why is my life like this? You don't have the light that would generate the faith to enforce dominion. You don't have the light that you that the light which I'm talking about here is the word of God. You don't have the word that be, that would generate the faith to give you the manifestation you're looking for. You just religiously believe. No, you need to have revelation of what you believe. You need to have the light of what you believe. You need to have light. So Jesus and his blood is the new foundation. It's the new foundation. Nobody here prosper says, Go, I'm here to excel. I'm not only going to prosper, I will make others to prosper. I will not only prosper, I will make others to prosper. See, if you don't have revelation, you won't have confidence and boldness. Confidence and boldness only operates in the realm of revelation knowledge. And confidence and boldness is required in enforcing the will of God. Confidence and boldness is required in enforcing the will of God. Confidence and boldness is required. Your confidence will come from revelation knowledge. Your confidence will come from revelation knowledge. That is why Paul said that God will grant us the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Ephesians 1.17. That's, that's why that prayer is very important. That you begin to pray that prayer. Somebody can be very popular, very known, and come and tell you there's a foundation problem. That's your business you believe in. That's your problem. That is your problem. You need to, no man of God is bigger than the truth of realities of redemption. No man of God. No woman of God. So when people teach and minister, the first thing, your foundation for judging what you hear is Jesus and his finished work. Your foundation for judging what you hear and what you hear, what you keep listening to is Jesus and his finished work. So whenever somebody is teaching, you're asking yourself a question, what is the relationship of what is taught connected to the person of Jesus and his finished work? If this thing does not connect to the person of Jesus and his finished work, I have no relationship with it. Can I say this to you? Wrong believing is the doorway to oppression. I said wrong believing is the doorway to oppression. Wherever you see people being oppressed, they believe the wrong thing. Wrong believing is the doorway to oppression. And somebody says, ah, she has the gift of prophecy. Every prophecy has to be judged in the light of the person of Jesus and his finished work. Oh, that guy can see very well. It has to be judged in the light of the person of Jesus and his finished work. The gifts of the Spirit has to be judged in the light of the person of Jesus and his finished work. So if that gifts of the Spirit does not pass that test, you don't take that. You need to, he said the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And that is the litmus test for judging every manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit. There are certain things people will come and say, that somebody else come and want to say, God said I'm going to be the president of Nigeria. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. God said, even if God said, you can't say it loudly. You get what I'm saying right now? Win the election first. And God said, and you, didn't, you lose. Does it really relate with, I don't know what I got on saying. There are things that bring embarrassment. I don't know what I got on saying. God said, before you use that word, God said in the public space, in a large space, you have to be very careful with that. You don't just come and say God said because the more you say that and people are seeing different results from what you said, it means that God is not able to keep his word. But the God will know is the God who keeps his word. I don't know if I'm meaning to somebody right now. The God will know. God, he said, let there be light. And there was light. You see, when God speaks, is what he said, upholding all things by the word of his power. The entire creation is uphold by the word of his power. So every gift of the spirit has to be judged in the light of the blood of Jesus, the person of Jesus, and the finished work of Jesus. Every gift. It doesn't matter how the man get placed over 100 million people they listen to the man. It doesn't matter how many million that listen to him. If that thing is not consistent with the finished work of Jesus, it's not a gospel. A lot of people are believing wrong things and it's affecting their lives. They can't walk in liberty. They can't walk in dominion. Why? Wrong believing will open door for oppression. 
A wrong believing will open door for oppression. There's a mindset some people have. Oh, there is something in that place that makes people not to succeed. The Bible said the earth is of the Lord and the fullness thereof. And somebody saying there is something in that place that makes people not to succeed. He said, when you believe wrong, it becomes difficult for you to win. We have authority. The defeat of Satan is real and your authority is real. I said what? The defeat of Satan is real and your authority is real. I want to say it one more time. I said the defeat of Satan is real and your authority is real. One more time again. I said the defeat of Satan is real and your authority is real. The reason why Jesus gave you authority is because he defeated Satan. But let me say this way too. Before he defeated Satan, he gave his disciples uh, authority. They went out. They came back and said, Satan was subject to us. Have you read that before? In Luke Gospel. He said, and, 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 and in, in his name, they cast out devils. And they came back rejoicing. And they said, the devil was subject to us. And he said, don't bother about that. Jesus have not died. Satan was subject. Jesus have not died. They were reigning in life already. They were coming back with testimony of what happened in their meetings. Why? Because he, they are using his name in my name. In my name. So when he died, he perfected everything. Can I say this to you? You expected to live in dominion in every aspect of your life. You expected to live in dominion in every aspect of your life. You expected to live in dominion in every aspect of your life. You expected to live in dominion. You are expected to live in dominion. And for you to live in dominion, Christ's consciousness is key. For you to live in dominion, Christ's consciousness. Christ's consciousness. Becoming Christ's consciousness. is a Christ in you. It's a Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ's consciousness is key to walking in dominion. Christ's consciousness. Christ's consciousness. Christ in you, the hope of of glory the greater one lives in your inside hallelujah as a child of god you don't have to be afraid of witchcraft you don't have to be afraid of anything why because greater is he that is in you than what is in the world as a child of god the greater one lives inside of you the greater one lives in you the greater one lives inside of you he lives in me in him i live move and have my being where do you live in him you have the God life. You have the God life. The greater one is inside of you. Hallelujah. Is somebody receiving here today? Ephesians 1 verse 3. Look at what he said here. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us. We started by talking that the reason why we are walking in this blessing is because of redemption. Because of what Jesus did. Who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Verse 4 said, Ephesians 1 verse 4. He said, just as he has chose us just as he has chose us before the foundation be sorry before the world just as he has chosen us before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love he has chosen us before the foundation of the world and the five said having predestined us to adoption as sons by christ jesus to himself thank god i'm adopted Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> adopted. Who is adopted yet? Into the family of God. Adopted. 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 I hope you know that taking care of adopted children is very expensive. Do you know that? Huh? It's easy to bond begin. Huh? And you treat the begin anyhow. But when you adopt a child, there are some legal backing in that adoption. Very strong legal backing. He has all the rights. He has right to inheritance. He has a right to everything. And that was what God did. He adopted you. You came into the family, not because you were qualified, but because grace prevailed. Adoption is grace prevailing. I said what? Adoption is grace prevailing. Grace prevailed on your matter. Grace prevailed on your destiny. Adoption is grace prevailing. The grace of God prevailed. There were children that were in a home where they were abandoned. And a very wealthy fellow came and adopted that boy. When he was just 
uh, uh, just one year old and begin to treat him right. When he was two years, three years, they sent him to school, started taking care of him, taking care of him. He, he, he walked into wealth. When we adopted, we came into abundant life. We came into the God life. You came into the will of God. The nature of the Father is at work in you. When you came in, you are adopted. You are not ordinary. You have, you have right to everything Jesus has right to. I said, you have right to everything that Jesus has right to. You have right to that. He's the firstborn of many brethren. Firstborn. Firstborn. And in every house where there is firstborn, sometimes there will be secondborn, thirdborn, fourthborn, fifthborn, eh? Like that. And Jesus is the firstborn of many brethren. And can I say this to you this morning? The love of God is after you. Redemption was rooted in the love of God. I said redemption was rooted in the love of God. It was the love of God that made redemption possible. It was the love of God that made redemption possible. It was the love of God that made redemption possible. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave. For God so loved the world that he did one that he gave his only begotten son. Now, whosoever that believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The realities of redemption is rooted in the revelation of the love of God. The realities of redemption is rooted in the revelation of the love of God. The reason why you have the God life is because of God's love. God loves you so much. He loves you so much that he sent his only son to come for you. If you are the only person in this world, Jesus could have still died for you. Jesus did not die because we are many. He died for every individual. If you are the only person in the face of this earth, Jesus could have died for you. His death changed your story. His death and burial, resurrection, ascension became the foundation of your faith as a person. His death makes all the difference. Hallelujah. In Ephesians 1 verse 6, Ephesians 1 verse 6 said, To the praise, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. When he died, you became accepted. We don't have issue of rejection. We don't have issue of rejection. If you're a Christian and you're battling with rejection, you don't have to. The person who accepted you is greater than the love any man wants to show to you. The person who accepted you is greater than the love any man wants to show to you. There is no love anybody can show to you that can be greater than the love of God for your life. They talk about the love of a mother. The love of a mother cannot be compared to the love of God. I said what? The love of a mother cannot be compared to the love of God. The love they have not seen children before. She has seen them in newspaper. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> Did you hear me? <laughs> that if we think <laughs> she has not seen children before, she has seen them in newspaper. <laughs> you know newspaper now? You know in those days they were newspaper. <laughs> That if you think she have not seen children, but she have seen children in newspaper, you know, I never forget that <laughs> over close to, for, to 39 years ago, my mother said that now, I never, that if you think that she have not seen children before, that she have seen them in newspaper. So even sometimes, some mothers get tired with their own children say, love somebody with a mat, with a crease. Then yeah, you know if you love that person. That some of your family members have been stressing you. You just tell them, see, you respect yourself. I they warn you, no near me. God never say, no near me. <laughs> God they say, come to the throne of grace with boldness. <laughs> you see, that is why he's God. That is why he's your father. You see, when you have the revelation of the love of God, you will never be far from God. When you have the revelation of his love, you will never separate yourself from him. If you have the revelation of the love of God, you never walk in condemnation of sin. You will never live in condemnation when you have the revelation of the love of God, that God loves you. The greatest gift you have in this life is the love of God for you. The Father loves you. He didn't love you because you got it right. He loved you because he got it right for you. I want to say that again. God did not love you because you got it right. 
God loves you because he got it right for you. He made it right for you. He didn't love you because you got it right as a person. He loved you because he got it right for you and said, take the victory. Nothing will make God change his mind concerning you. I said, nothing will make God change his mind concerning you. In Ephesians 1 verse 7, it said, in him we have redemption. Where do we have redemption? In him, he said, in him we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of sin. We have redemption. We have forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace. In him we have redemption. Do you know that God loves you? Do you know that God has a plan for your life? Do you know that God is the reason why we are standing? When Jesus died, he changed your experience. No matter what you are going through right now, the love of God is after you. No matter the mistake you have made with your life, it cannot be compared to what Jesus did for you. I want to say that again. No matter the sin you committed, it cannot be compared to his mercy for you. So no matter where you are right now, the mercy of God is reaching out to you. No matter what you're struggling with right now, the mercy of God is after you. So don't sit down and say, I am not worthy. His blood made you worthy. Don't sit down and say, I'm not qualified. His death qualified you. Don't sit down and say, I, I don't have what it takes. His resurrection made that possible. Don't sit down and say, well, I don't think God can use me. Look at all the things I've done. If you check the Bible, he used murderers. He used fornicators. He used adulterous people. He took them out of those things. And he used them. There is nobody God have used that was qualified to be used by God. I said there is nobody God have used that was qualified to be used by God. Nobody was qualified from Genesis to Revelation. Nobody was qualified to be used by God. For you to be used by God, God has to qualify you. Because in you, you don't have what it takes to qualify yourself. In you, you don't have what it takes to stand. You don't have, he said uh, in Romans chapter 10, they went about trying to establish their own righteousness. Forsaking the righteousness of God. That means they, they, there is the righteousness of God. And this righteousness of God is the gift of God. And it functions well when you begin to renew your mind to walk in the realities of this gift of God. Every one of us here have the gift of righteousness. Redemption made that possible. I said every one of us here have what, what is called the gift of righteousness and redemption made that possible. Can I say this to you? You have been redeemed to live the God life. And God loves you. And nothing can stop you from rising. You have been redeemed to live the God life. You have been redeemed to live the God life. You have been redeemed to live the God life. You have been redeemed from sickness and disease. He said, in, in him we have redemption. Where do you have your redemption? It is in him you have redemption. Look at this scripture here. Hebrew 9 verse 12. In Hebrew 9 verse 12 he said, Not with the blood of goats and calves. Not with the blood of goats and calves. You know in the Old Testament they will bring goats when they sin. They will bring goats. And they will kill the goat. The blood. It will cover them for a period of time. But the sin will continue. But that thing they have done will cover them for a period of time. God was tired of that. And he said let me solve this problem once and for all. And that is why we have what is called eternal salvation. Hallelujah. You have what? Eternal salvation. Now look at the scripture. It said, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the holy place once for all. Having obtained eternal redemption. Some church people are having problem with that word there. Eternal redemption. <laughs> ah! What he obtained was not a seasonal redemption. Goat was doing something for a season. Is somebody hear what I'm saying right now? For a season, that goat's blood will cover that person for a while. Ah, when the priest those days they used to have plenty goat. Ah, if I was in that day, 
Marcus who have many goats go to be coming. People will line up. Every see goat everywhere. I don't see goats everywhere. Goat. This goat will never give me sense why the pastor of this church. See goat food everywhere. Goat everywhere. Uh-huh. Abraham, don't bring in goats. Marcus, give don't bring in goats. Everybody, Junior brought his goats. My sister Rachel has brought her goat. Goat everywhere. Food. And so, sister Jim has brought her goat everywhere. Uh-huh. Goats. Uh-huh. They are not going to even kill the goats. Eh? I got to sell the goat. <laughs> I just tell you, your sin has been forgiven. <laughs> market will be my friend. <laughs> Call the market people say, I got 300 goats this week. See money now. <laughs> so, God saw all of those madness, all of those crazy things that was going on. Nobody was able to be free with all of those. And people, every one year, every few months, we don't carry God to go. We don't carry God to go. He said, no, I want to do it one and for all. I don't want this good. It's really, it's really inside churches everywhere. People, they carry good. Imagine what could have happened. Some churches go up be a like good center. People, they say good to be so happy. Eh? Because every week, they are selling thousands of goods. Thousands of millions of goods. Inside church, everywhere, everybody with their goats. Don't touch my goat. Oh. It's your kinds of people protecting their goats. <laughs> thank God for Jesus. Somebody says, Thank God for Jesus. <laughs> Somebody said, Thank God for Jesus. And he said, Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood. I, I like this. He entered the most holy place. Most holy place. Once and for all. I want to end this nonsense. That was how he ended generational causes. Once and for all. That your problem not end sins. Just that your mindset have not aligned with the will of God for you to walk in your dominion. Once and for all. He has solved the problem long ago. Once and for all. He said, he now purchased. Watch this now. He said, and having obtained. What he obtained is called eternal redemption. That means I have taken care of your sin problem. Eternally. Past, present, future. I've solved your problem. Hallelujah. Can someone say glory to God? Can someone say glory to God? Look at this. Romans chapter 3 verse 24. Romans 3 24. It said, being justified freely by his grace. Ah, we are justified what? Freely. By what? By his grace. Being justified freely. Sister, you have been justified. Brother, you have been justified. You say, Pastor, you don't know what I did many years ago. I said, you have been justified. You have eternal redemption and you have been justified by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. How did you get it? It is through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. You have been justified. So right now you can boldly stand and say, I am a new creation. I have the God life. I am a partaker of the nature of the Father. I am a new creation. I have the life of God. I am a new creation. I have the blessing. Listen to me carefully. The new creation has authority. The new creation has dominion. The new creation has power. But the new creation has to renew his mind in what he or she has to have manifestation of those things. If you don't renew your mind with God's word, you won't be able to walk in the boldness of what you have. This is why you got to renew your mind with the word of God. They said nobody can prosper here. Hey, Christ in me, my prosperity. Christ in me, my wholeness. Christ in me, my victory. They said nobody succeed here. They said the greater one lives inside of me. In him I live, move and have my being. You need to be conscious of your identity to enforce your identity on situation. I said what? You need to be conscious of your identity in Christ Jesus to enforce your identity on situation. So when you meet situation, come to the understanding of your identity. You need to understand your identity in Christ Jesus to enforce your identity on situations. You have an identity with the Father. You need to understand your identity in Christ Jesus to enforce your identity. Look at what he said. Being 
justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Through the redemption, you have been justified. Can someone say, I've been justified? Can someone say, I have been justified? One more time, I have been justified. Hallelujah. Who has been justified here? Who is standing right now? Who has been justified? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. That should be your mindset. That should be your mindset. You're justified. You have right standing with God right now. Can someone say, I have a right standing with God? I have a right standing with God. You have been justified. You have a right standing with God. Somebody say, oh, look at what is affecting this people. Oh, look at what is happening to this people. What is happening to them is not supposed to happen to you if you know who you are in Christ Jesus. Every negative experience you see anywhere is not meant for you, the new creation. The new creation is expected to walk in authority, expected to walk in their boldness, and expected to walk in the reality of their inheritance. You have an inheritance. Wake up every day telling yourself, I have an inheritance in Christ. I have an inheritance of peace. I have an inheritance of wholeness. I have an inheritance of strength. I have an inheritance of power. I have an inheritance with the Father. I have inheritance. This knowledge must be in you. You have an inheritance. If that thought comes, then what about if you die this year? Why not position yourself and say, what about if I live for the next hundred years? <laughs> eh? Eh? That thought came to you. What about if you die this year? You don't lie down on the bed. That is from Satan. Satan is trying to invade your mind. So he dropped that thought. What about if you die this year? You know what you reply? With your mouth, not with your thought. Oh. What about if I'm going to live for 200 years? In short, I'm living for 200 years. A lot of us, when those thoughts come, what about if this will happen? They will just, in that bed, they will not lie down and begin to say, hey, God, what kind of thought is coming to me now? What did I do? Now, Satan, I don't do you anything. No. Satan, leave me up. A Christian telling Satan to leave him. Now, Satan, I suppose to beg, he said, leave me up. Go your way up and leave me up. Now, you see a child of God crying. I don't know what I do. Enemies, oh. Enemies, oh. They don't scatter by life, oh. Born again, oh. Born again. Some people are not born again. They are born against. See, oh. See my life, oh. See my life, oh. They don't destroy my life, oh. How can you, as a new creation with authority, talk like that? Your mind has not been renewed to walk in the consciousness of your true identity and what you have in Christ Jesus. You're a partaker of God's nature. Nothing can fail in your hands. I said nothing can fail in your hand. Learn from this ministry. Learn from what God is doing here. Nothing can fail in your hand. You're a new creation. You're carrying the nature of the Father. He said, Pastor, I know. Pastor, I know. But the reality on ground, Pastor, the reality on ground is not agreeing with what is in the word of God. Pastor, the reality, what is the reality on ground? Mark 11, Jesus said, if you can say to this mountain, that is a position of authority. You are the one to say. You are not saying you are crying. Have you started speaking to the mountains? Have you started speaking to those things? Have you started calling those things that be not? Feed on the word as you can release your authority. Feed on the word. Feed on the word. Feed on the word. Feed on the word of God. Feed on the word of God. Feed on the word of God. Destroy those belief system that does not agree with who you are in Christ Jesus. Feed on the word. Faith comes by hearing. Listen to the word of God over and over. The love of God is after you. The will of God is after you. The angels of God are waiting for your instruction. The blood of Jesus is speaking better things on your behalf. Renew your mind with the word and live the God live. This message finished, you go back and begin to listen to it over and over. I used to listen to it. Some boys used to see me in my office. I'm listening to this message over and over. So now I was listening one day. I said, God, thank you for my pastor, for Pastor Fitman. <laughs> God. <laughs> God. <laughs> God bless Pastor Fitman. Ah, Pastor Fitman is a blessing. Eh? <laughs> I will listen. listen. Pastor Fitman is a blessing. Kai! Pastor Fitman, thank you for sharing. Hallelujah. Feed on the word. Feed on the word. All this fear, unbelief, doubt, and worry is because of lack of the word. 
all the fear and if you're right now you're here you're battling with fear you're battling with worry you're battling with anxiety it's because of lack of god's word if the word of god was making its way into your mind there won't be fear there won't be doubt there won't be worry why because the word will flush those things at john 15 verse 3 you're cleansed by the word which i've spoken to you but if the word is not making its way into your spirit so how do you become bold the fear is there because you don't have the word of god in your spirit Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. What are you listening to every day? Proverbs 4, verse 20 said, My son, attend to my word. My son, attend to my word. The word you ought to attend to is who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, what you can do with the Christ in you. Begin to feed on that. Begin to feed. Let me say this to you. These three branches of revelation is key to your prosperity, to supernatural living, effective living, a lifestyle of dominion. Number one, feed on the revelation of your identity in Christ Jesus. Every day, trying to know about who you are in Christ, who you are, feed on it. It will help you walk in authority. It will help you walk in your dominion. It will help you release the power that is in you. Feed on the word. How can you see that all your throughout the day? I cry, they cry. My situation. My situation. My situation. See, let me tell you this. If you look the Bible very well, there were people that were in worse situation than you when they came out. If you are a student of the word, Sarah, when God told Abraham they will have a son, you know what it means? You are 80 years old and they tell you you have a son. 85 years old. A word from God is the victory from God. A word from God is the victory from God. And God has given you a word in that area. It's a victory from God. The most important thing is to hear what God is saying. Not hearing or about what is happening around you is to hear what God is saying. What is the Spirit of God saying? What is the Holy Ghost saying concerning my life? A word from God is victory from God. The victory from God is that word you got from God concerning that situation. You take that word, you begin to magnify that word. I am blessed in my going out. I am blessed in my coming in. I'm prospering. You begin to renew your mind. A lot of us will go stay for the watch movie, watch movie, watch movie, watch movie, watch movie. We don't have time to take the word in. So now we have crisis. Hey, where are they go? Hey, because no word. Most of us don't read our Bible. And you say, you don't know what I see in the dream. They were pursuing me. They were pursuing me. I don't know who is pursuing me. Oh God, please save me. Oh. I beg go, oh God, I beg go, oh, please save me. Oh. What kind of nonsense talk is that one? He said, In him you live, in him you move, in him you have your being. He said, We are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. If you don't have the revelation of who you are, it will be difficult for you to enforce the will of God. Number two, you need to feed on the revelation of what you have in Christ. You need to feed on it. It should be part of your daily thought about who, about who you are in Christ and what you have in Christ. You need to feed on it. What you have in Christ. Knowing about your inheritance. Knowing about what is available to you. You don't sit down there. All you do is to cry. All you do is to complain. Look at my condition. Look at my life now. Nothing is working. You are the first prophet of your life. You will receive what you say. You are the first. What are you saying with your mouth? What is coming out of you? Why not begin to say I'm a billionaire for Christ? Why not begin to say I'm prospering? Why not begin to say the doors are opening for me? Why not begin to say things are working out to my good? Why not start prophesying? Why not start speaking the word? Some people are not saying anything. This year now, wow. Since this year starts, not in the walk oh. They are the ones saying it. As a man thinks, so he is. So start thinking that things are working for my good. What you believe and what you say are key to what you will see. What you believe and what you say are key to what you will see. Whether it's in your marriage, it's in your business, it's in your ministry, it's in your job, it's in your finance, it's in your career. What you believe and say will determine so much around you. Hallelujah. Feed on what you have in Christ. You have righteousness. You have sanctification. You have wholeness. You have blessings. You have strength. What it takes to create wealth is inside of you. 
I said, what it takes to create wealth is inside of you. Look at how you practice it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that I have ideas that change history. I have ideas that lead to wealth creation. I receive supernatural ideas of what to do with my life. I receive supernatural thoughts that will change my situation. I don't get job. I don't get job. I didn't look for job. Start calling in ideas. Start calling in ideas. Wouldn't be job. Begin to call. It's been to, tonight. You begin to pray in tongues. Or this afternoon or this morning. You begin to pray in tongues. I receive ideas of wealth creation. I receive ideas in the name of Jesus. I, I receive ideas from heaven. I receive understanding. I receive revelation. A lot of us are not even believing God for ideas of wealth creation. We just say, you know, since this year, I no job. I no get anything. I just say, wait now. Anything where God may want to do, may then do. I just say, wait. How can you be waiting on another fellow human being to determine your destiny? When you are a new creation, you have the God life. I receive supernatural ideas. I receive supernatural insight. You keep a diary by the side and begin to pray in tongue and you're listening to a message and you're praying in the spirit or you're listening to a worship music and you're praying in the spirit. I receive ideas. Maybe an idea can come from wealth or it has to do with design of clothes. It can be to start a real estate business. And you say, you know, I don't even have one million naira. How will I start a real estate? You can start as an agent. From agency, you begin to see, you begin to learn it. I receive ideas. You can be a middleman to move, to move products from one country to the other. You, let me say this to you. Around you, there are ideas. Around you, there are ideas. But it's by the Spirit you receive them. You receive them today. I want you to begin to believe. I receive supernatural ideas. I receive supernatural ideas. I know what to do. I know what to do. I receive ideas from heaven. I receive concepts. I receive insight. Holy Spirit, help me. I receive ideas. I receive thought patterns. I receive wisdom. I receive insight. Don't just say, I know get job. I know get job. I know get job. I'm looking for job. Why are you not praying in the spirit and begin to believe God for ideas? begin to believe God for concept begin to believe God for vision vision to start a company vision to start a business vision to run something to become an entrepreneur begin to believe God don't just sit down there waiting for who will employ you waiting for who will give you a job and there are no jobs anywhere in this country people are looking for a job every day why not begin to pray in the spirit I receive ideas maybe it's in the area of building you begin to believe God for ideas in the area of building you can begin to believe God for designs for concepts don't just sit down there and say, I'm looking for a job. Begin to pray in the spirit and expect ideas. You're a new creation. Heaven can give you information. You always have information from heaven by demand. I said, you always have information from heaven by demand. You always, you ask, it shall be given. So ask, ask. Don't sit down there and say, nobody won't help me. Then they help you at all. Then they help you at all. How will you live your life like that? No, nobody won't help me. Nobody won't support me. You, you cannot, you are not disadvantaged. The new creation has advantage. The new creation has advantage. You are not disadvantaged. This business is not working. Begin to believe, go for idea for another business. Begin to be, say, let me say this to you. You have ability for multiple tasks. You have ability for multiple tasks. You have ability to do multiple things. You have graces in you. Be awakened to the reality of your greatness. There is more to you than what you know about you. There is more to you than what you know about you. Don't just sit there and say, this country is not working. It's working. It's working. It, don't be among those that say things are not working because you will get what you say. Your life is moving in the direction of what you say. You're a new creation. That is your advantage for world creation. That is your advantage to change things. You sit down, you're reading something and you begin to pray in tongues. I receive ideas. I receive ideas. I receive concepts. I receive insights. I'm a billionaire. I'm a billionaire for the kingdom of God. I'm a trillionaire. I call those things that be not. I call ideas from heaven. I call insight. And then the Holy Ghost begins to bring something in your heart. Have you thought about how to package this or that? He said, I've not thought about that. He said, write it down. When you're praying for ideas, have your diary by the side. Have your system, your laptop, your things. Don't look for job. Create job. Don't look for job. Create job. Don't look for job. Create job. Have the mindset to be a job creator. From this meeting, this morning, as we conclude this morning, have this mindset. I am the CEO of my life. I'm the CEO of my business. 
You begin to see yourself like that. You begin to talk like that. There are many businesses going on around you. But if you don't ask, you won't receive. Ask heaven for information and you'll be informed. Let's rise. I want us to begin to thank God this morning. Oh, hallelujah. He died for you to have a better life. Mm. He died for you to have a better life. He died for you to have a better life. Rato sheke robo shataraba. Reto bo sheke to libra karaba shakaraba. Rete bo sheke to robo sheke to libra gara. He died for you to have a better life. He died for you to have a better life. He died for you to have a better life. Rikataraba sheke baba. Redemption was possible because of the love of God. Ma sheke to libra gada baba. He died for you to have a better life. Rakataraba sheke to libra kataraba. I wanted to begin to pray in this service and say, Lord, what you have done for me, I begin to walk in the realities of it. I begin to walk in the manifestation of the things you have made available for me in Christ Jesus. Somebody begin to pray in tongues right now. Somebody begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Begin to pray in the Spirit. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. The greater one lives inside of you. Sister, you have authority. Brother, you have authority. The greater one, you will lay your hands on the sick and they will recover. You are carrying the life of the Father inside of you. You have authority, you have dominion, you have power. The scripture said, No weapon from against you shall prosper. You are carrying the grace of God upon your life. You are carrying the grace of God inside of you. You are not an ordinary person. You are carrying the grace of God. Nothing can successfully defeat you because you are carrying the nature of the Father. You are a partaker of the nature of the Father. You are carrying the nature of the Father. You are carrying generational blessing inside of you. Sister, you are carrying the blessing. Brother, you are carrying the blessing. You can create wealth. You have what it takes to create wealth. You have what it takes to create businesses uh. you know what it takes to change your world uh. Makanda, blah, blah, blah. somebody pray in the holy ghost lift up your voice and pray in the holy ghost uh. oh receive from father the greater one is in you for you to enforce the will of God the greater one is in you for you to enforce the purpose of God the greater one is in you for you to manifest the glory of the father the lamb has been slain it's time for you to manifest it redemption was for benefit redemption was for advantage redemption was for purpose Redemption was for greatness. Redemption was for increase. Redemption. Manana, 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 mayaka. Rekaraba shekamba. Rekatorobo shekamba. Ribrato seketeli blagara. You are carrying the grace of God. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Mayakaraba. Lord, I receive revelation. I receive revelation. Insight from your word. Le komba leba shekanda la baba. Rakataraba sheketoli blaba baba. The greater one lives inside of you. The word of God is the power of God. Hmm. The word of God is the power of God. When you speak the word, you release the power. I said the word of God is the power of God. The word of God is the power of God. Somebody pray in the spirit. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. The word of God is the power of God. You 
you are carrying the energy of God inside of you you are carrying the power of God inside of you you are a new creation now you are a partaker of the divine nature if you're born again you are a new creation you're carrying the God life the life of God is in you you cannot be defeated the greater one lives in your inside you can enforce change in your family you can enforce change anywhere you find yourself you are already anointed your words are powerful you are anointed sister i said you are anointed brother i say you are anointed can you call those things that be not as though they were the answer is yes because you're a new creation a new creation with dominion a new creation with power a new creation with the anointing a new creation with the grace of god you are a new creation if you're born again you're a new creation you are a partaker of the god life the greater one lives in your inside you're carrying power if you speak it to happen you're carrying grace if you speak it to happen it's time to use your authority it's time to use your dominion it's time to speak you have been waiting for things to happen make them to happen by speaking you have been waiting for things to change uh, speak the change you're looking for what do you really want uh, in line with the realities of who you are in Christ uh, the greater one dwells in you you are carrying the anointing that will bring a shift you don't need a special prayer you don't need a special prayer to manifest power you're already carrying the power just be conscious of it uh, and use the power you're powerful you are anointed you're carrying the grace of God you are not ordinary everyone hearing me right now that is born again has the god life are partakers of the divine nature the nature of god is in you you are not under a curse you are not under a curse you have been redeemed from the curse of the law you are not under a curse you need to renew your mind to begin to walk in the application and in the consciousness of who you are in christ you need to renew your mind to begin to know what is available to you in christ jesus there is so much available it takes light to see it takes wisdom to see it takes understanding to see in the name of jesus father we thank you this morning i pray for everyone here right now that they walk in the consciousness of the god life in them they walk in the consciousness of who they are in christ they walk in the consciousness of the power of God that is already inside of them. They walk in the consciousness of the grace of God that is upon their life. You are not ordinary. You are a partaker of the God life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, Amen.